Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie Galanis, board certified plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, California. Today is the second in a two part series where I'm letting mommy makeover patients do the talking. Today we're gonna to dive into a discussion about the surgery itself. Everything from getting ready in the weeks leading up to it, getting the household ready, preparing for a recovery, and what recovery was actually like. Today we're gonna to be talking to four of my mommy makeover patients who are gracious enough to join us to discuss their experience with mommy makeover surgery. Uh, the topics today that we're gonna sort of focus on are the lead up to the day of surgery itself, how they prepared for it, so on and so forth, as well as the recovery after surgery. So uh, I wanna thank you guys for joining us. This is Valerie, Teresa, Tanya, and Lauren. All right guys, I know that, you know, We've made the decision to go through a surgery, kind of, you know, that that's coming up. And we had a discussion with you in clinic about getting ready for surgery, the tests you need to go through. So um, I kind of just wanted to open it up about what that, what that entailed. As, as people might appreciate, it's basically basic blood work um, and seeing a physician or getting a clearance. Was that a difficult thing for you? Was it disruptive to your lives or was it, you know, a pretty simple thing to get through? I think for me, I was trying to figure out, like, is this going to get covered by my insurance? or is it something that I'm gonna to have to pay out of pocket? And trying to get an answer for that from my healthcare provider was a pain. Yeah. And it, it, they ended up just covering it. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, sometimes what they can incorporate that to is a wellness check. Right. Or sort of a, an annual physical, and that would be covered by insurance. And sometimes people will use that as their wellness check prior to going through a surgery. Right. Um, if you had already had one, then it may be a little bit tricky. And obviously there's gonna be some variability with insurance, but I don't know, Teresa, did you have a different experience with it? or? Um, it was fairly easy, the process. I opted to pay out of pocket for it just because I didn't want to wait. I think uh, right before it came up pretty quickly upon me. Yeah. So um, I actually uh, had my first mammogram uh, <laughs> before the, <laughs> the, right. the surgery. So um, it was something that I had kind of been putting off. So you were adamant about, you know, really you yeah. know, setting that foundation before I got the, the surgery. Afterwards, I, I thought, hey, that wasn't a big deal. Yeah. So excellent. Yeah. You know, approaching 40 or in their 40s or people that are kind of in the guidelines for when they need their screening, it's really important to get that done before going through with an operation because, you know, God forbid we have the operation, then we find something and then you have to have another procedure. So I'm glad that worked out for you. And yeah, <laughs> and it was totally easy. Yeah. And Tanya, what about you? For me, it was kind of the same as Valerie. I tried to figure it out if my insurance covers it. I had to pay on my own. Yeah, so, yeah. but that was, I think that was the easiest part. Out of everything, it was the easiest. Um, I was told to maybe just go to urgent care, which I did, kept it super simple, went yeah. to like my local urgent care around the house and I, it was really easy. Um, you know, what I, what I tell people, all surgeries, safety is the first priority. And the first step in that is before going into an operating room is making sure that there's no other issues we need to address and that's kind of what the point of all that blood work the urine tests and things that we do beforehand but what about getting ready for that day you guys have families you have kids you have jobs you have obligations and responsibilities and i, I think i have to confess i think as surgeons we just sort of we're thinking this is the date you're going to have surgery you know we might you know, people will give instructions but i think having that discussion from you guys about what what was really important for you or how you navigated that how you kind of got yourself ready for surgery would be valuable for people to know so Lauren what was it like for you so um, I think I planned it pretty well actually because I had my surgery two days after Christmas and I knew that like in our business like you know a lot of businesses people take a lot of time off during that time and I was planning on being up at my parents house for Christmas left the kids there for four days, I think after my, you know, I had four days, the surgery and then three days after without them. I wish I had longer, but that's just the way it worked out. Mm -hmm. But I was able to take off some work, you know, time off work at that time and plan to, you know, be home with just my husband to help take care of me. I couldn't afford to, uh, you know, obviously I need to take time off work, but to have a nanny or a babysitter help me and then have the kids physically in my house. I wanted them to be out right. of the house. I didn't want them to see mommy like that. Yeah. I didn't want to have to like, you know, I'm the, like most moms want to do more for, you know, people in the house. I wanted to just like be alone and not have to think about it. Got so it. that was important for me. Yeah. Um, like I said, three days was good. I wish I had a little bit more and didn't know how to anticipate that, which yeah. is why this is really good. You know, right. you don't, and everyone's experience is going to be different, of course. Tanya, what about you? Well, for me, I had to really plan it. We don't have family here. Yeah. So I had to 
um, my husband has to take time off from work and he take care of me. But first, the first two days, I went to this place you told me about right. it. A recovery so center, yeah. I went there for two, two days, two mm -hmm. nights, something like that. Then after that, I went home and my husband took care of me and... And you yeah. know, and as Lauren mentioned, everyone's experience is different. One of the things you, you pointed out, there are recovery centers that some patients will yeah. utilize to spend a day or two at. You know, they're essentially like, kind of like a hotel with nurses, basically. Yeah. So, you know, whether for a lot of patients who are out of town patients or patients who maybe don't have as much support, you know, locally, that's a, that's a great option. What about you, Teresa? How was it for you? Well, I planned my surgery the week after my son got out for summer vacation. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so that I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to drive him to school every day. Yeah. I'm a single parent, so I knew that... Um, some of the activities that I had to do daily, you know, in regards to getting up and, and getting the day started wouldn't, with school, wouldn't happen right. if, if I was in a recovering mode. So um, I actually, um, I did buy a recliner yeah. uh, that lifted me up into a standing position. Wow. And wow. I did have a walker on hand in case uh, to get around the house. Yeah. And... Um, when when I actually uh, got home the, the very same day, I had my mom set up to stay there for uh, the rest of the week yeah. overnight just to watch me to make sure that uh, everything was okay and that, that if I needed help going to the restroom, I could yeah. do that. And then my son kind of took care of me the rest of the time. And, um, you know, I just uh, was able to walk maybe the same day but I uh, you know I, I did need a lot of assistance yeah right unquestionably so, the first night you're gonna need yeah. someone there present yeah. this is not a this is not a procedure that you go home and no. you can have your phone by you to get someone you no. need a physical presence there to help whether it's family or whether you need to go to mm -hmm. a facility so I mean I think you're all kind of highlighting that I mean now you have five children at home correct and how old is the youngest he's three okay so I'm sure a lot of people would like to know how that was. How <laughs> so you I made sure they were all out of the house for I think 48 hours. I I knew that I just wanted, right. I didn't want any noise, I didn't want any extra stress. Yeah. And that was really helpful. Um, and then I had my sister-in-law come. Okay. And just stay for the week. Yeah. And that was super helpful. And I think she realized more than I did how much. I thought she was just going to be taking care of the kids. Right. I thought I would be okay, just in my room with all my things. Yeah. And I needed her a lot more than I, I yeah. thought. And so I'm glad that she knew <laughs> and had the foresight to I, yeah, be there I, to help me because I needed more help than I thought. And sorry to interrupt. I think that one thing too that I'm picking up, in addition to, to having people around, you know, one of the other things too that we talk about is getting the layout as, as set up as you can before right. the day of surgery. Try to make it a one, one story situation as much as possible. People that have multi story homes plan on just being on one story for a little while, having the, the things you like to read or watch, having food and drink available. So, ha, you know, some people choosing to get it at the chair. Like I think getting, the chair getting, is an yeah, awesome. Getting those things better. sort of ahead of time is, is key. We've talked about the lead up, going to surgery, how you kind of get ready for it. You know, we've touched a little bit on what happened after surgery. I kind of want to get a sense of your mindset the day of surgery or what the process was the actual day of surgery, both before and then when you woke up. Um, Everyone's, I can tell you from my experience, everyone's, everyone's experience is very different. So, you know, we have four different people, four different experiences. What was, what can you remember from the day of, can I, from the moment you kind of woke up, what, what that was like before surgery? Obviously, you don't have a memory of during surgery, but then right. and, and after. Um, it was pretty, it was pretty smooth. I was, I was pretty tired. I don't remember like getting home necessarily, you know, and I was pretty out of it the rest of the day. Yeah. But I was, I was functional, but like I couldn't like keep my eyes open and like have a conversation with people. Do you remember what your mindset was before? Do you remember I was being pretty in the waiting calm. room? Yeah. I, was, I was pretty calm. I, was, I mean, I was a little bit anxious, but I felt like calm overall. I, anesthesiologist was really great. And Surgeon wasn't it. bad too, hopefully. Yeah. It was just... <laughs> 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 Teresa, what about you? How was your, what's your memory of your mm -hmm. day of? Well, I was definitely nervous, yeah. but um, I think right when I got to your office. I was there before you, so yeah. and I was like a hundred percent sure at that moment that that I was doing the right thing. That's great. And uh, so it took a little bit of the edge off. Yeah. Just kind of having um, someone tell me exactly what to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that I didn't feel just out there. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and then 
and then you came and, and we sort of talked and recapped mm -hmm. about the procedure and uh, did some markings. And uh, then the anesthesiologist met with me and mm -hmm. he, he put me more at ease, um, you know, with his kind of Zen attitude. Yes. And, yeah. and then- um, I also know who you're talking about there too. Yeah, <laughs> but, then, but then after that, you know, uh, everything, you know, seemed to go smoothly. The next thing I knew, you know, yeah. I was being woken up. And one thing that I wanted to mention is that as a mother, you are very nervous that you will not wake up yeah. to be there for your children. Right. And um, you, that, that's the one thing where, where you kind of waver ab about the surgery at, at some point yeah. is, you know, I'm gonna be under anesthesia for a while. Am yeah. I going to wake up from this? Am I going to be there for my kids when, when uh, this yeah. is all over? You know, and, and I think that was a, a hard point for me. I had full trust you know, being in your hands, which is a very good feeling when you're going through what we all went through. I was definitely still nervous. I think that's natural and yeah. maybe be a little unnatural if I, you know, we're not nervous for, you know, any reason. But I think the day of, like, I was just really excited. I knew this was happening and I'd kind of, you know, the anticipation always gets me a little, like, uneasy, yeah. not knowing what to, you know, what's going to happen after. What I would call healthy nerves. So Absolutely. nerves that are indicative of the, an awareness of what you're going through. Um, that you're aware of the of you know what you're about to take on, even if you don't fully know. I mean, you don't know exactly what your recovery is right. going to be like. You you recognize the seriousness of it. Things you wish you had known about beforehand. You know, in terms of the you know the surgery. You had surgery. You thought you'd have everything laid out. And aside from maybe wishing you had more time or having more help, is there anything else that you're like, God, in that first 48 hours, I needed this and I didn't and I didn't think about it. Lauren, I can see you're just itching on this. Well, because I did not expect um, that I would have such a reaction from the anesthesia. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, what would have changed if someone warned me of that. Yeah. I still would have done the surgery. Right. It still would have sucked. Yeah. <laughs> that first 24 hours. But maybe having that medication you gave me, at the, you know, whatever that was. The nausea medicine. Yeah, to which try. was amazing. Yeah. And that's, and, you know, across all surgeries, I would say that's something that as surgeons we, we deal with. And we were kind of in conjunction with anesthesia because it's not, not the anesthesiologist's fault, but it right. has to do with the drugs the anesthesia is administering during surgery. And they, those do stay in the system for about 24 hours. And a lot of people, they'll feel a little bit nauseous, and then when they get that first dose of pain medicine, that kind of puts them over the edge. I knew you told me I was gonna have to sleep sitting up and doing everything in this position, but it took me a minute to get comfortable. Right, what I think I tell patients now is, imagine before surgery what you're gonna need to be able to be flexed in bed. Do you have enough pillows? Do you have the right kind of pillows? Yeah. Go try it, is it comfortable now doing it that way? Because if it hurts now, it's not gonna be comfortable after. Absolutely. I had joined a couple of Tummy Tuck Facebook groups and oh, wow. um, it was really helpful and beneficial to me to ask other people who had already been through that process yeah. what kinds of things you need at your bedside. Right. You I think know, that's and so smart. Yeah. everybody had like a, a list that, that they kind of chimed in with and they were able to kind of say, well, you definitely need, you know, wipes by your bed or, right. you, or you need. Um, you know, to look at getting a recliner or, or something of that sort. So I, I think that was really helpful to me to kind of consult other people that had already been through the process. My hope is that honestly, watching this can be a resource just as the Facebook chat group is. Mm -hmm. So I think this was a great discussion about getting things ready. I think we even touched on some of that early part of recovery, we yeah, kind of overlapped yeah. into that. But I think some of the take home things that I think are important to convey are getting the, the support in terms of people power, sort of you know, family members, nursing staff, whether it's a home nurse or getting some sort of away facility, so having people. Sort of setting up your home in terms of making things easier, easy to get to, being able to navigate the home, having things like pillows or having the right kind of chairs if that's things, something that you're gonna want. And just preparing for things that you might not think you need to think about, but preparing on how to how am I going to be in a flex position how that how am I going to do that with what I have at home so I think those are kind of some of the take-home points to take from this typically at one week post-op for uh, patients who are having mommy makeover surgery whether it's abdomen and breast if they have drains a lot of times those drains may be coming out at a week that would be the earliest generally they come out I that's when I start to talk to patients about working on their posture a little bit gradually starting to, to stand upright depending on kind of how they're feeling 
Otherwise, things kind of stay status quo that first week. People are still kind of feeling it. At two weeks is when I, if the drains are still in, they come out. There are some sutures around the belly button we typically take out. Really working again on the posture, getting people to stand upright and making sure that when they're walking, they're standing upright. Um, and then again, just waiting. A lot of times there's still compression aware and the next checkup isn't gonna be until about six weeks post-op. There's a big difference in how people look from one to two weeks and certainly from one to six weeks, it's night and day. That one to two week period, let's talk about that. So what was going in from one to two weeks? How did that feel? How did that, what did that look like for you? It felt so much better than the first week. <laughs> okay, it's a start. <laughs> Just being able to stand up, to be like given permission to stand up straight was relieving because my back hurts so bad mm -hmm. from being so bad. Yeah, and that's actually very yeah. common. I, I tell oh. patients a lot of times the pain more you're going to feel in one week is going to be more the back than yes. the incision. One hundred percent. And once you're able to stand up straight, that'll get that'll kind of fix itself. Yeah, so right that was out. nice. And I just kind of gradually went back to my regular routine. Yeah. I just kept it. I kept like the mornings where I when the kids were in school. I didn't really do anything, you know, I sat around most of the time. But mm -hmm. then when they were home from school, I did their, my regular thing, made dinner, helped them with their stuff, took them around to things. And so I gradually got back into my regular. Do you care. remember your pain requirement, pain medicine requirement between one and two weeks? Were you taking I much? I don't think I was taking much on the second okay. week. I think I was taking like ibuprofen and Tylenol. I think after, right after the second week mark, I had gotten the drains removed and to be honest, that was sort of the game changer. Yeah. That was the the uh, line in the sand yeah. where I started to feel immediately a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt more mobile. Yeah. I felt more independent after those were taken out and, and a lot less in pain yeah. with those out. Um, and I remember that right after this, that second week mark where I had the drains taken out, I did go to a, my 4th of July parade. Yeah. Was that kind of, was two week a mark for you? Massive. Yeah. In the drains. I mean, everything yeah, you it, said, I agreed 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Like the line in the sand. I felt like they were kind of debilitating. They were yeah. kind of in the way and just a nuisance and uncomfortable and trying to get in and out of that um, garment, with, garment. The, yeah, yeah. with the drains. Like with the drains and putting them through. I remember them pulling and I just yeah. didn't like them. I didn't like them. Why would anyone like them? But, no. <laughs> but uh, you know, we've, we've all like had our experiences with that and, and I could not wait to get those out. I felt so much better. Some people struggle a little bit more. Maybe there's other factors, but I think all people, if you all comers by two weeks, I'm not saying they're done with recovery by any stretch of the imagination, no. but they're back to kind of feeling like themselves like a little bit again, or there's that light at the end of the tunnel, like, and, okay, now I'm starting to feel that joy, like you were just saying, like, yeah. yes. first you're like, yeah, I put myself through. Yeah. Right. Yes, <laughs> but it is so worth it. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. we all, I'm sure, are sitting here, like, we're definitely talking about the, the challenges, and there were plenty of them, but man, it was worth every bit of that. And I, but I think these challenges are important. It's part of the reason yeah. we're having this, because it's really easy to find how great it is if you look at reviews, yeah. or if you look at testimonials. You can find pl plenty of evidence of how worth it it is, but people need to see the part that comes before that. Totally. So what I tell people at six weeks, what's, ta what's changed from two weeks? By six weeks, if you're wearing a compression garment, you're ready to ditch it, or you're pretty close mm -hmm. to getting rid of that. If you're, if you're feeling up to it, you're ready to start slowly reintroducing some activity. When you get closer to eight weeks, then you can really be more aggressive in terms of exercise type activity. Um, you know, those are, those are some of the things that, that we kind of are transitioning to at that six week mark. So what was, your, what was your six week kind of like for you? I felt pretty much back to normal. I yeah. felt like I, I was back to work. I felt like I could. And you're a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. and, and your job, does it, are there a lot of kind of physical demands with what you're doing? Yeah, we're moving you patients. You have to move patients and whatnot, okay. So feeling back to normal at yeah. six weeks. Do you remember your six weeks? Yeah. How was it? I feel better. Yeah. I can do more, more things. You were smiling. You were back yes. to talking about beach vacations <laughs> yes. at six weeks. Yes. There wasn't a lot of talk about beach yes. vacations at one and two yeah. weeks, but at six weeks you were back yes. to talking yeah. about Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember. I feel funny. so happy. I'm ready to do things more you know, more me, yeah, you know, yeah. and I start chopping around and, you know, I just feel, you know, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I started working out at six weeks. Yeah, I, I know. Remember. But I remember feeling really good and really excited to feel really engaged with my core again. Like, I can't say that enough to people. Like, yeah. Yeah. that was huge for me. And at six weeks, you were kind of finally doing Yeah, I felt that. really good. You know, we talk about three months is the first time that we are looking at a result. The reality of it is that's not entirely true because things continue to evolve well past three months. 
Um, but it still is the first kind of real snapshot or, of like, okay, this is where we are right now and we're, we're, we're really close. Um, I tell a lot of people, as you know, we just discussed with you, revisions sometimes are necessary in, so, in small areas. Sometimes scarring is, people scar a certain way, sometimes incisions can migrate. I generally don't do anything at three months, I generally wait until at least six months and sometimes 12 because those scars do remodel over that period of time. Yeah. So there's nothing when I'm seeing you guys at three months that I expect to be different in terms of the way you feel because usually this, the difference between six months or six weeks and three months, it's not that different from, from what people tell me about how they feel. The result is, look, is, is continuing to evolve and you can see a difference. Um, but that's my first time to kind of look and see, okay, where are we? So the three month visit is, I guess what I'm saying is more my visit. Right. It's my chance to check in with you guys. It's not because you need anything from me at that mm -hmm. point. Then I, I try to check in with you guys again at six months and then 12 months. And then I, I, I like to keep following people after that. I do remember though that the three month, like I like getting your feedback on, yeah, the scar is looking like where it should be. Right. This is where it should be. And that's yeah. always comforting to know because yeah. it's not like I was ever concerned. Right. But, you know, I just like to get that feedback from you. So that's always positive. But I remember not like feeling, not feeling a huge difference in, yeah. in the six, six weeks to three months. We do have a discussion about scarring at that point and plus or minus if there's anything we need to touch up. And what I tell people, three months is usually when the scar is going to be at the darkest. And after that point, it shouldn't get any darker than that. It should get lighter, if anything. It may stay the same for some people. Some people just, they scar thicker right. or darker. I, I try to reassure people, this is not what your scar is going to look like in the end, most likely. But this is appropriate for where you are in three months. I hope that video helped answer some of the questions you might have. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to write them in the comments section below, over on our Instagram, or head over to my website, and myself or one of my team members will be happy to help you. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more videos just like it. And until next time, have a great day. And remember, there's beauty in the before and the after.